In John 10, 10, Jesus says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come so that they would have life and that more abundantly. And the Lord really, Holy Spirit's bringing us into an understanding of what that abundance is. You remember our 222 word, which is, it means zo in the Strong's Concordance, zo, which is the everlasting life, which is the type of life that that word, that scripture is talking about. Because sometimes we we are we don't want to fall into the counterfeit Christianity, which looks at abundance in terms of worldly things. That is not our covenant. It doesn't mean God will not bless us. It means this is about our heart and preparing us for the next life. This is the age that you've been born in. This is the the specific remnant that has been set aside for this time. That are, pe are not a people that are concerned with the things of this earth. Though yes, He will bless you. There is no lack in our Lord. He will bring unity in your heart, in your families, in your lives. He will bring love. He will bring healing and restoration, rejuvenation, and total resurrection to all dry and dead bones because that's according to his will. But when it comes to this scripture, what he came to give us life more abundantly, the abundantly, no, no, no. The life is the 22220. And the word abundantly, according to the Strong's, it actually means a sense of beyond or this cool word superabundance superabundance one word superabundance and again this is about eternal life he came this the thief comes to steal kill and destroy jesus came so that not only would we begin our eternal life now but that we should have eternal life eternally Jesus came to give us what this world cannot offer you. And we shouldn't be we shouldn't miss out on that. You know, as I was speaking a little in the former video, when Jesus came to this earth and the Jews didn't receive him, it was because they expected a physical they expected the king to come how they wanted him to come, Messiah to come how they wanted him to come with the sword at that time to kill the Romans because they had suffered for so long and they wanted their vengeance. And they said, if you're Messiah, then why haven't you destroyed the Romans and set us free? Yet Jesus came to give us something greater and the people had no understanding and so they killed him. And still today, the Jewish people, many of the Jewish people still have no understanding and do not receive him. And he doesn't, you know, this may be the first time where God's people, his church, his beloved have understanding because the Holy Spirit's pouring that out on us and that we aren't acting like he owes us something or he's not good enough because he didn't do what we expected him to do. But rather, we are a people of understanding that get that what his business is, especially in this end times, especially in this end of age, is to deal with your heart, is to save souls, and really to bring to pass a church that is faithful, a true remnant that doesn't continually backslide and turn back to the things of this world, which doesn't mean we're perfect, you know, praise the Lord for the blood of Jesus Christ, but truly a, a remnant of David's who have a heart for the Lord, who are honest with him in their suffering, but can still say, you are good. You know, who don't put expectations on him or put their hand out to him. Like he owes us something because he truly gave it all at the cross. You know, what is greater than eternal life? And, and sometimes we, you know, if we don't have understanding, then we always want more. And that's not to say that the Lord doesn't bless us. He blesses us all the time. And you can testify to that. You know, for everyone listening to this, we have more than so many. You know, there are people in this world that don't have access to hear, the, to connect with the brethren, you know, that don't have access to even the word, which is actually pretty heartbreaking if you think about it. You know, sometimes people can deign to open their word and some people just wish for that bread of life. You know, we can't understand how truly blessed we are. And it's, it's easy, especially we in, in like first world countries, it's really easy for us to expect more and more because that's our culture. That is the culture to want more and more, especially what's physical. We want to see it and then we'll believe it. When we know that Jesus himself self said, blessed are those who believe without seeing. 
And even, you know, we got to be careful not to come into this counterfeit Christianity because the beast system is here. The beast system is here. And it's got many hearts primed, many hearts primed to follow it. Because the beast system is not saying, yes, I worship Satan. The beast system is just, yes, I worship self. And there is none who worship self who will enter the kingdom of heaven. None who worship self who are going to experience the super abundance that Jesus came to give us. Sure, you might experience the things of this world because, you know, Satan, Satan's going to bless those who have a heart for things, who have a heart for themselves. He is. Why do we think that the gate to the narrow path is small and then the journey is difficult and that's why there are few who enter it? That's what the word says. But broad is the path, you know, and many are on it. Many are on it. And that leads to destruction. You know, sin always looks good and feels good before it damns you. Always. That's the nature of sin. It's an illusion, a delusion. This is why the Lord tells us that even a rich man, it's hard for him to enter heaven, harder than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, which is near impossible. Because it's really easy, as he says, as God himself said in Jeremiah, it's really easy. Our hearts are liars and wicked, you know, and none of our hearts will be fully perfected until we cross over that other side of the bridge in, into heaven, you know, but he continues working on us. But when we continue to put our heart for things of this world, continue to be people that just want to see what we want to see, you know, we're saying to him that you're it wasn't enough we're saying calvary wasn't enough we're saying what you did for us wasn't enough i still need more i need more and we don't want to fall into that you know what i mean we don't want to fall into that is it and that's hard in itself that's why the word says it's hard and there are many afflictions for the righteous because this is a fallen world because when you truly live righteously in your heart inside out in this fallen world you're going to get persecuted by the enemy by people and you're going to experience affliction and it's going to be a difficult walk <clears throat> excuse me and this may even be you know the evidence that you're on the narrow path and that's not because i said it that's because the word of god does i just you know i know that the holy spirit is pouring out and i just pray I just pray, Lord, just help us to receive your love. Help us to receive your understanding. Help us to receive your peace that surpasses everything that surpasses these things. Help us to believe, Lord, that you are truly and still a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. And let us not put expectations upon the rewards that you give to us. And let us not put expectations upon the blessings you give us for our obedience. You know, he's not a tit for tat father. You know, it's never going to come to pass that you should be obedient for things. You know, it's never going to come to pass that that God blesses us with idols or gives us something that's going to lead us into temptation. And so many of us are praying for things that aren't good for us, that aren't right for us. And he's like, just let me give you what you need, you know, which is of a spiritual nature, because that's the covenant you're in. And sometimes, you know, we want to mix the promises of old into the covenant of new. And we can't do that. Like, there's much to learn in the Old Testament. But that's not our covenant. That's not our covenant. It's not. And it's funny because many people, including, you know, uh, the Jewish people, believe that they are still in this old covenant with God. And they're not. It doesn't exist. Only the covenant by the blood exists. And then we have the worldly Christianity that believes that it's entitled to every promise of both the old and the new covenants. And that's not the case either. God brought to pass every promise of the Old Testament. He gave the people the promised land. And the next generation, they turned against him. And then it went on and on and on and on and on and on until he sent Jesus Christ. And since then, we've been in a new covenant. And this is a new understanding. You know, I, I certainly didn't have this understanding in the beginning of my walk, but he really just opened your eyes to truly see like, why is like this? And why it's truly not his fault. 
and why if we should follow him we should want more like that that's a wrong heart posture he'll bless you he'll give you everything you need but if we continue to, to ask for more we're no different we're no different than the Jews were that killed him and the Lord still loves his people he still loves the Jewish people just like he loves us you know he's a compassionate God wanting all to repent but there is a certain mindset, a certain heart set of the world that existed when Ju Jesus walked on this earth that still exists today. And it's, the, it's one of like this. Why aren't you doing what we want you to do? Why aren't you bringing to pass what I want? And it's completely, you know, it's the opposite. If we're saying not your will, but my will, not my will, but your will be done then we shouldn't even have expectations on him other than that whatever he brings to pass is good i'm just going to follow you i'm just going to be humble and meek for the people and then whatever you bring to pass is good and whatever you don't bring to pass i receive I'm not saying it's easy and the word tells us that it wouldn't be but this is our covenant our riches are stored in heaven our abundance our Spiritual blessings are of a spiritual, our blessings are of a spiritual nature. And for the final time, yes, God will still bless you on this earth. But he didn't promise us in this covenant, he didn't promise anybody physical things. There's a lot of people who are saying, God promised me this and that, which is really just demons that are validating your flesh of what you want, what you expect. And then you're going to say, well, God promised that to me. Every promise of God is in the word. If he's going to bless you, he's going to just bless you and bring that to pass. Don't be deceived. I just pray that we wouldn't let our hearts be deceived as to what this walk's about and as to his goodness and as to what he owes us, which is nothing.